we looked at the general rules of Middle English versification or prosody. Let's look at some of the more stickier situations. Sometimes when you're trying to scan a line, remember scanning is a way to deconstruct what you've been hearing or seeing. It's reverse engineering a poem. Sometimes they don't work and you don't trust the general rules. Remember of weeks are grammatical grammatical units or grammatical words and strongs are roots or monosyllabic verbs, nouns, adjectives. Sometimes it makes makes it seem weird and you and your instinct is to say, well, the system is iambic, therefore it must be weak, strong, and and you find yourself putting weak words with the strong stress, the strong stress. That's because you're not thinking about what is called the trochaic inversion. The trochaic inversion is when a foot begins with a strong and ends with a weak. Here's an example. To see trochaic inversion, let's first count out the syllables, and that's always important. Governed is by four to this error. Governor is by fortunus error. Caesura. And now let's listen to trochaic okay, conversion. Governed is. Governed is. These are the feet. So the first foot is strong, weak. That's a trochee. And then it's picked up by weak, strong, and is, in this case, is taking strong. Usually is will be weak, but in this case it takes strong because you always want strong in front of the caesura, unless you have those strange caesura like the cupitalian or medial caesura, which, which stops on a weak. And then the rest of it is iambic pentameter. Weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, and error, not error. French words again, remember, words of French origin can either be stressed left Germanic, error, or fortune, or they can be stressed right romance, like French versions, fortune or error. It's a nice rhythm. I'm going to use the, uh, the alternate notation device, the trochaic inversion. It's strong, weak, weak, strong. Friend of effect, that's of course where the caesura is, and friend of contenance. You can hear the sound effect, right? Strong, weak, weak, strong. Flee from the press, Caesura, and dwell with sooth, fastness. And of course, sooth and fast are both strong words, but they're in different feet, right? On the right side, this side needs to take a strong to hold the rhyme. Shakespeare is filled with opening lines that are tro have trochaic inversions, as does Chaucer. Sometimes you count the syllables and you don't get 10, you get 11. What do you do then? Well, the lines are decasyllabic, no matter what people say. The question is, what do you do with that 11th syllable? The first, the first thing you can do is look for a metaplasm. A metaplasm basically allows you to take two syllables and turn it into one. Some people call it slurring, but it's an old grammatical figure. Here's an example. Let's first count the syllables. And over all this, if any lady right that's 11 syllables it is clearly not possible we clearly need a metaplasm in particular in this case cinerasis which turns two syllables into one and of course our choices are either over or any i'm gonna give you the correct answer but you can always find it by scanning weak strong and you'll see how if you do it one way, it will be wrong. If you do it the other way, you'll get the you'll get that meter right. And or over over all this, if 
any lady bright. And we can see this is correct by just uh, scanning it. And O and O'er all this if any lady bright. It's a perfect decasyllabic line. And all we did was turn over into one syllable through the figure of Cineresis. The 11th syllable does not exist. The line is decasyllabic. You may also have run into what we call feminine endings or feminine rhymes. Those are words that end on the root, but have some sort of ending that's grammatical. For example, ing, ing. And so that ing at the end of the line becomes extra metrical. Why? That's because the line must end on a strong and the tenth syllable is the strong syllable. This is from the Canterbury Tales. So pricketh him natur in her courages, then longin folk to go on pilgrimages. Counts like eleven. So pricketh him na tour in her courages. This is not counted. That is a feminine ending. Watch. So prigithem natur in her. We're going to promote, we're doing, I have a pentameter, but you can imagine how this is going to work if you did phrasal stress. Cora. Just see that? That final week is not counted because the decasyllabic line is 10 syllables and it ends on a strong. Same case here. Then long in folk to go on peel grimages. Sometimes you may also run into what are called lyric caesura. That's kind of like a feminine ending, but in front of the caesura. All right, let's do the syllabic count. One there shall fall in any ad ver si te. What you're seeing is a lyric caesura because the caesura is here, that N is not going to be counted. When there shall fall in any adversite. And let's see, let's scan it. You always scan it to check and see, scan for its rhythm. When there shall fall in, it's obviously weak, any adversite. Those are the feet. And this is extra metrical. We're not counting it. That is an example of a lyric scissora. Now, what if you have only nine syllables? You may have run into this. This is the opening of Canterbury Tales. One that April with his shorasota. And you're not going to count that final uh and the eh because these are schwa and they're weak. They're just not counted. Occasionally, Chaucer will count them, and people have counted this line as being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But that's not what's happening. We call a line that's missing its first syllable a headless line. And here's how you actually would be numbering it. You thought it was nine, but it's actually an excellent decasyllabic line. One, one, that, that's three, April with his shortest in the 
Caesar is clearly here, right? One that April with the shorter sota. The reason why people have problems with scanning this line is because if you don't make it headless, then you have four. It's up. It reads as if it's four syllables, a like classic caesura, and then it follows with a disaster, right? But in fact, it's not a classic caesura. It's a cupitalian remedial caesura minus the missing syllable. And when you scan it, it makes total sense because you never say one. It's one that april missing week. One that April. And notice how the feet are. That's exactly where the Cupitalian medial 5-5 five, five Caesura ends, right? There's a week with, that's the promotion, his shortest sota. One that April with the shortest sota. It's missing a syllable but it's a perfect decasyllabic line because it's a headless line. Or if it's not headless, it might be a broken back line. This example is from Charles of Orleans, as we're gonna be doing that too. And Charles of Orleans loves to play with this. Uh, pre be sweet, a sweet cuss. Two or three. It's a nine syllable line, but it's not. It's a 10 syllable line. It's just missing the syllable after the caesura. It's actually a broken back line. A privy sweet, sweet kiss. Then your caesura, right? You can hear that, a privy sweet, sweet kiss. Then we're missing a number here after the caesura. This is the eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you can scan it. And this has also all of the relative stresses that we were talking about. A privy sweet sweet kiss, right? This is the missing week. Da, two, or three. A pretty sweet, sweet kiss, two or three. You can hear it. It's actually 10 syllables, dexlabic line, but it's missing the seventh syllable after the inverted caesura the 6-4 Caesura. Remember, all of these variations are to add flavor to the line. Poets don't want to be monotonous. They have to break diambic pattern occasionally to add some flavor. You also noted that the Caesura will sometimes move from the fourth syllable to the sixth, to the second, to the third, to the fifth. These are all strategies to make the poem sound interesting. Now for the next lecture, we'll get to Charles Burley. All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell.